Orton had failed to revive William's stage career, but he did transform his private world. In the summer of 1966, Orton and Halliwell took Williams on holiday to a place that would change his life. Tangier, in the 1960s, was a haven for gay men, drawn there by the availability of sexual partners in a society tolerant of unconventional lifestyles. Orton took to it like Pinocchio at the fair, you know? I mean, Orton really could get into it, loved it, was sensual, was young, muscular, worked on his body. Typically, Williams approached the Tangier experience with more restraint. Barry Wade met him on his first trip there. We'd wear all his full clothes, suit, tie, jacket, sit on the beach, completely dressed. We're not going to take my clothes off, don't they, son? But we would all go swimming, and, and Kenneth would have a few drinks and um, plonk himself into a deck chair and go to sleep. Rather like that, as you can see. And he might take a jacket off if it got too hot. That's about as far as you'd get, I think. He would complain bitterly all the time and thoroughly enjoyed it. But while the temptations Tangier offered unsettled him, Williams couldn't resist completely. He came to the villa. I used to rent a villa there for three months. And he loved all that, to come up to the villa, a couple of parties, complain about them, of course. I shouldn't be here. It's immoral, the whole place. Jump on the back of a bike with a Moroccan, drive off. Eventually, he took me to a sleazy apartment house in the Medina, where a Spanish queen with an ill-fitting toupee showed us into a wretched chamber for 15 diem. I'll have another bit of that tomorrow. He disappear. Where have you been, Kenneth? Mind your business. So, um, you, uh, you don't... Uh, you weren't expecting to get any information at all. Even there, where the freedom was almost encouraged, it's part of the local industry to have this kind of sexual freedom. He was retiring to hotel rooms in the deep in the souk, you know, in the Casbah, in the, in the very darkest corners he could find. It all happened out of sight, and then he could still say, I'm Sullivan, I don't do anything. So you say, yes, Kenneth. In Tangier, Williams could skirt the fringes of a world that both repelled and fascinated him. It offered an escape from his unhappy life at home, and, as these previously unpublished photographs reveal, somewhere that he could relax and feel part of life. On all the occasions, I fled to Morocco because of some inner despair. There wasn't one really successful visit in the sense of spiritual replenishment, but they all worked after a fashion because new rhythms were created and the pendulum must swing. It's when the pendulum is motionless or barely moving at all, that is the time of suicidal despair. But the relationship that helped create these new rhythms was cut tragically short. On August the 9th, 1967, Kenneth Halliwell beat his lover Joe Orton's brains out with a hammer. He then took 22 sleeping tablets to kill himself. The loss of his friends confirmed for Williams the danger of following Orton's sexual creed. There's no question about it. It is a homosexual entanglement that does destroy Joe. There's no question about that. I mean, Halliwell's jealousy, I mean, his letter at the end says the answer to this can be found in the diaries, and the diaries of Joe were entirely accounts of um, promiscuous sex. Mitchell, no! Oh, no, 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 please, madam, no, I cannot, not before a meal. But one area of William's life was unfailingly successful, his role as a carry-on star. S-E-T. S-E-T. Sex. Enjoyment tax. Audiences loved their bawdy humour. And the series fast became the most successful in British cinema history. During the 1960s, Pinewood Studios were turning out up to three a year, most featuring Kenneth Williams. You may 
maniac! <laughs> the films of British, the capital B, if you actually analyse them, very, very daring. But it was all innuendo and um, totally acceptable, really. Oh, excellent. Well done, Mason. Uh, well, it seems a little bit rickety, Doctor. Is it? Yes, well, of course, it's fairly easy to get it up. It's getting it to stay up. That's what counts. Oh, One of the reasons that he was so loyal to the Carry On films is that so often what he gave in the theatre, people said, we want less of this. Uh, and with the Carry Ons, they said, we want more of this. And the audience says liked it too. So he had a hit on his hands, and we all would rather like a hit. Do not worry, we will make it easy for them. They will die the death of a thousand cuts. Oh, no. Oh, that's horrible. Nonsense, child. The British are used to cuts. You're playing the part of, a, of an Indian... Uh... I am playing, yes, Randy Lal, the Kazi. He is the sort of Rajah, you see, who's anti-British in this. Uh, do you think that uh, this is the type of part you like acting? Oh, I always do. It's got a touch of the sadism in it, you see, and I'm very good at all that, being a bit nasty, you know. Yes. Enjoy that very much. They didn't want characters. They wanted the essence of what you had. So Kenny was like himself. Do you think I'm an idiot? You wouldn't dare do anything to me, and you know it. He was very snooty, very grand, very erudite. I'll cut his two-faced pipe. He used to mug around and joke around, and he did that in the film. You're wasting your time. You can't do anything to frighten me. Come on, then. Turn him out on his side. No, no, no. I'll die. I'll die. He brought a kind of restrained anarchy. Uh, you never quite knew what he would do next. The others, Hattie Jakes, Sid James, you knew exactly what they were going to do. Are you all right, Doctor? Am I all right? Of course I'm all right. But you watched Kenneth because, at that time, he could suddenly surprise you in a, in a very ordinary scene. <laughs> yes, I'm fine. I wouldn't say he was over the top. But he got near the brink, and that's what he enjoyed. He enjoyed that immensely. Always putting the oar in. Williams gave as much a performance off the set as he did in front of the cameras. He liked to gather people round him and tell stories. The whole cast and the, all the staff, and even public who were watching, would, would be waiting for him to set up his stall to tell stories. It was like the Pied Piper. Typical of Kenneth Williams' sense of humour, the mayoress of Wolverhampton came on the set one morning and he was introduced to her and immediately went into a story that he does very well and tells everybody. And there is a tape of it uh, where he's playing it with Bernard Cribbins as the doctor. And you may like to hear it. Oh, Doctor. Good morning. Good morning, Doctor. Morning. Sit down, oh, please. thank you. Oh, oh, I must see you, Doctor. It's terribly well, important. What seems to be the trouble? Well, you see, it's this, it's this wind all the time. You have been it's dreadful with my work, you think. Yeah. Just, oh, I'm losing jobs, you see. What, I go, what, what I'm, is your job? I'm a short anti-typist. <coughs> well, um, is and I'm, do with diet, you suppose? No, I eat anything. <coughs> I eat all the time. <coughs> oh, you know, anything, cornflakes <coughs> and porridge. Well, I, I think I'd better just examine you. <coughs> and there's, um, there's no sort of side effects, are there, with these? Oh, things? well, the only, <coughs> the only thing is... Doctor, though there's the noise, uh, there's yes. no smell. Oh, that, that's, that's yes, right. Yes. Here, you're, you're not going to put that thing up my bum. Well, no, I'm going to stick it up your nose, because if you think they don't smell, it's your nose wants to see it too, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was mild. There was little Williams wouldn't do to attract attention to himself. This Roman tunic I'm wearing in the film is really quite attractive, in white and gold. Just a minute. Give me a chance to look all sexy. I continually lift it up and expose my cock and everything at the unit. Come in. They're all rather disgusted and laugh it off. 
Evening, Cock. Thanks, Cock. I'll be ready. But quite a number of them have remarked, Oh, Kenny, not again. Put it away. 